Hey, what's up guys? It's Luki Pookie here with another TFT video for you guys today. Today, I'm going to be talking about the scout primary, the Soda Popper. The Soda Popper is an interesting weapon in the sense that it has gone through quite some big changes throughout the years. It was originally a very different weapon if the critical cans taped to the barrel weren't enough for you to think so. The main purpose of the Soda Popper has grown to be mobility, similar to the Babyface Blaster, but it prioritizes jumping instead of run speed. But after its series of changes and fine tuning, the question surfaces, is the Soda Popper still over overpowered? And if not overpowered, how does it stand? Is the Soda Popper a good choice? Is it viable? And if it is not overpowered, then why has it been banned by competitive leagues? First things first, I'd like to delve into the weapon's stat history since many of you may be unaware of what the Soda Popper used to be. Added as part of the number one fan item set in the Uber update of June 2011, the base weapon, if you will, was identical to today's Soda Popper. The weapon has a plus 50% faster firing speed, a plus 25% reload time, and only two shots per clip rather than six. However, the weapon's height meter used to be based on distance traveled rather than damage done, and it granted mini crits rather than four extra jumps. Now, the distance traveled function of the old meter was, I must say, completely ridiculous. All you had to do was run around in circles with the thing out to charge the meter, so you could just build it up in your spawn if you wanted to, so you didn't have to work for anything really. One weird mechanic was how there was no button to actually activate the hype. Because the hype was automatically activated once the bar was full, what you had to do was build the meter a sliver from being full, and then switch to your secondary or melee weapon since the meter only built when you moved around with your primary weapon out. You would then run around with your secondary or melee until you were ready to switch back to your primary, have the bar fill completely, and therefore activate the hype. Hype used to grant mini crits to all of Scout's weapons for a full 8 seconds. The fact that you could build the hype meter by literally just moving around in circles in your spawn and then have a full 8 seconds of mini crits for free basically, also without needing to replace your pistol, was just plain stupid. It's also worth mentioning that at the time of the Soda Popper's release, Release, the Criticola secondary weapon caused its wear to not just serve mini crits, but to take mini crit damage upon drinking it as well. So those mini crits, unlike the ones that came from the Soda Popper, came at a great cost to the user. Now that I've gone over how incredible the old weapon was, let's go over the changes that shaped the Soda Popper we have today. Following a December 20th, 2013 patch, the Soda Popper's hype meter no longer granted mini crits, instead granting four extra air jumps when active. In addition, it was buffed in the sense that you could now activate hype by the press of a button, rather than needing to run around with your secondary or melee out until you wanted to switch back to the Soda Popper to activate it. This way, you could still engage in fights with your primary when the bar was full without automatically activating the hype by doing so. Another small patch two months later removed the no random critical hits penalty since the weapon now had no crit bonus functions. It was not until the Meet Your Match update back in July of 2016, almost a year ago as of making this video, that Valve finally made the height meter based on damage you do to enemies rather than distance traveled. Finally, you couldn't build height by just running around in circles in your spawn. <laughs> You now have to actually earn it instead by doing a total of 350 damage with any of your three weapons. In addition, the weapon's hype was changed to last for 10 seconds rather than only 8. So here we were left with essentially a brand new weapon. But the question has persisted, is the Soda Popper still overpowered even after its nerfs? I find that today's Soda Popper is still a powerful weapon. UGC and ESEA, amongst other leagues, have it banned from play. It's basically like the Force of Nature minus the knockback and a tad of damage, but with a bonus hype mode ability. The Soda Popper does the same exact damage as the stock, but as mentioned earlier, fires 50% faster and has a clip size of only 2 shots. This can be a great thing for taking out other scouts and other low max health classes if you can land shots consistently. For unaware enemies, similar to the Force of Nature, you can often take someone out before they even react to you, assuming 150 to 200 damage is enough to get the job done. I find the base this weapon's weak spots are heavies, overhealed soldiers, or just anyone overhealed past the point where two shots will not kill them. When playing around with it, I often found myself hitting a high health player with my two shots and then habitually switching to the pistol, when instead simply waiting out the soda pop reload would be more effective. 
That being said, it's very important to pay attention to whether it's worth switching to the pistol to finish someone off, or if it's just better to wait out the Soto Popper reload instead. After all, the reload is only one and one-fifths of a second, so it's very often just best to reload rather than rely on your secondary. Now, when it comes to hype mode, I find it amazing for soldiers who are using the stock, especially if they don't have the shotgun equipped. It can also be great against a demo man, but be sure to change directions mid-air unpredictably as to not get air shot by pipes. I found that the hype mode kind of sucks against heavies who can aim well, in addition to enemy scouts and really anyone who has hitscan weapons. Against pyros, hype mode can be absolutely brutal, especially if they're not using the shotgun. As for snipers, it can be awesome at very close range, although a good sniper can probably body shot you without much trouble if you're jumping around in the distance. As if it wasn't already easy enough to fight a medic as scout, using hype mode makes it practically impossible for the medic to fight back. The hype mode can also function as a great escape method, and for getting up to high places quickly, obviously. So, are the soda popper bands justified? After playing around with the thing and playing against it, I would say yes. In sixes, it's banned for the same reason as the atomizer. It gives scout an unfair edge against soldiers and demos with its hype mode. In my opinion, however, I wouldn't say the soda popper is outright overpowered for casual play most of the time. It's a bit cheap and frustrating to fight against at times, but when you're using it against a team that has more than one heavy, which I run into quite often on pubs, I feel that the scattergun is actually a better option. But in Highlander and strictly structured sixes on the other hand, the soda popper is quite a headache. In my opinion, the soda popper should either be nerfed for purely the sake of competitive play if that's what Valve used as appropriate, or it should simply remain banned and unchanged, only allowed in pubs where it's not very overpowered. Heavies easily counter the soda popper, although in sixes where there are no heavies for a huge majority of the time, and in Highlander where there's only one heavy, the soda popper is a problem. Let me know in the comments if you agree with me on the soda popper or if you feel otherwise. If you're new to my channel, subscribe for more CF2 content like this this, and check out my other uploads if you'd like, such as the video I just did analyzing the proposed scout nerfs and Valve's recent blog post. That being said, hope you guys have an awesome rest of your day or night, and peace out.